Hey everybody, Tony Dietrelizzi here, author and illustrator of books for young readers. Um, I'm here at home and probably uh, here for a while like you. Um, I'm actually in my studio, which is where I uh, come up with my stories and do all the artwork for the stories that I write. And I like to use my imagination a lot. Um, it keeps me inspired, it's kind of my superpower, and um, it helps me come up with these different types of stories and worlds that I create. And perhaps you're using your imagination at home as well to keep you entertained and pass the time. Um, one of the stories I used my imagination a lot was this book, Kenny and the Dragon. It's a favorite book of mine that I wrote some years ago. And um, it's a retelling of an older book called The Reluctant Dragon, which was written by a man named Kenneth Graham uh, many years ago. Um, I thought it'd be nice to maybe read a little bit, maybe the first chapter of it for you, something to do to pass the time. It starts off with a uh, little introduction by our narrator, who's a little kind of a shrew. I don't know if you can see him there. And he says, before I forget, many years ago, but hold on, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that a book about a dragon should start with Once Upon a Time, but this one doesn't, because frankly, I don't really know what Once Upon a Time means. Now, I was once upon a horse, and that was fun. Also, I was once upon a knight galloping on his horse, but that's another story altogether. So instead, let me start our tale with this. Once upon a farm, in a town just west of yours, and on a Wednesday many years ago, a rabbit farmer, his wife, and their son Kenneth were preparing to sit down for supper. Now, Kenneth seems a little formal for a boy's name, doesn't it? No kid would say, Kenneth, can I borrow a pencil? No, they'd say Ken or Kenny, can I borrow a pencil? And no doubt our Kenny wouldn't even notice when they swiped it from his school desk. For you see, Kenny always had his head buried in a book. And he loved to read all sorts of subjects. Science, mysteries, histories, and even fairy tales. In fact, fairy tales and natural history were his two favorite topics. And as far as Kenny was concerned, both held the same merit in the real world. So it's not surprising that he enjoyed going to school. He always asked compelling questions always did his homework, complete with footnotes and a bibliography, and always had fantastic notions about what he wanted to do when he grew up. One day he wanted to be an astronaut and meet the extraterrestrials from a distant planet. The next he'd decide on a jungle explorer looking for living dinosaurs, or he'd build a submersible that could go deep into the ocean to find lost underwater cities. Each day it was something new. That kid has such an imagination, his English teacher would say. His identification of local flora and fauna is quite impressive, his science teacher would say. Kenny Rabbit, mm, he's kind of out there, his classmates would say. And to a certain degree, they were right. You see, like them, Kenny grew up on a farm. Both his mother and father were farmers. They came from generations of farmers who grew vegetables and raised livestock. So his parents, like most of his neighbors, really didn't have time to read books. They were just too busy tending the farm. You can't harvest a can't, you can't harvest corn with a book, his mother would say. No bookie book's gonna bring the sheep in at sundown, his dad would say. Regardless of what they thought, though, his parents did their very best to support Kenny in all that he did, right down to listening to his lengthy theories on this and that over dinner. You see, Kenny would tell them, it's going to rain because cold air and warm air collide in the upper atmosphere. This creates thunder, and it causes the moisture within the cumulus clouds to fall. Huh, I thought it was going to rain because the cows are laying down, his father would reply. And most folks in his town would have agreed with Kenny's dad. Hold on a second. What was the name of that town? I can't believe I've forgotten. It was near water, if I recall correctly. Hmm, Dunhill? No, that's in the northern province. Meadow Falls? That's not it either. But it was a stream or river. <gasps> Roundbrook, that's it. The town was sort of roundish in layout with a brook running through the middle of it. Goodness, I can't believe I'd almost forgotten. Not something a fellow in my position should allow. Alrighty then, so in the little farming town of Roundbrook, Kenny lived with his parents, went to school, did his chores on the farm, and filled the rest of his time reading which is precisely where we find him at the beginning of our tale. Chapter One, That Devil Scourge. Here's Kenny's father coming in through the front door. 
Kenny's father burst into the kitchen, panting heavily. His ears twitched. It was supper time, and Kenny's mom was making her family's favorite corn chowder. The soup's heavy aroma swirled about as the farmer moved through the room. Pack your things! We're out of here! We're moving! Kenny's dad hollered. He was a scraggly, hairy fellow wearing a wide-brimmed hat, and he was trying to catch his breath as if he'd been running. Moving? Not now, mister. Kenny's mom replied. The corn's not boiling yet, the broth isn't quite right, and I'd still have to sew the patches on Kenneth's trousers for school tomorrow. Kenny's dad paused, walked by the stove, dipped his finger in the pot, then agreed it wasn't quite right. Get your dirty paws out of my chowder, wash your hands, have some milk, and tell me what's got you so riled up. She ground a little pepper into her broth. Unlike Kenny's father, she was soft, round, huggable, and seemed to always be adorned in an apron with a spoon in her hand. And here's a little illustration of Kenny's mom cooking. Kenny did, Kenny's dad did as he was told. Then he stroked his ears and started. This afternoon, my eyes saw something I wish they'd never seen. I went to Shepherd home, the sheep, up on top of Shepherd's Hill where they'd been grazing all day. As soon as I get up there, I see the sheep all huddled and quiet on the far side of the hilltop, and I think to myself, what in the world has got them so spooked? So I wander over to the other side of the hill. You know where them rocks and boulders are? Mm-hmm. Here, taste this better. Uh, yes, much better. So I, hold on, dear. Kenneth, get out here and set the table. The wooden floorboards creaked as Kenny shuffled into the kitchen, his head buried in his book. He was reading a story about a giant written by a man named Oscar. Without looking up, the small, skinny lad opened the cupboard and grabbed plates to place on the table. No plates, bowls, Kenneth. I told you early, we're having corn chowder tonight. Get your head out of the clouds, put the book down for a minute, and set the table properly. His mom snatched the book from his paws and set it on the counter. The wooden counter was dinged, scratched, and stained from years of use. Pots and pans hung from the ceiling right above where Kenneth's mom was cooking. She reached over and opened one of the numerous round windows to allow the cool country air into the kitchen. Don't you want to hear the rest of my story? Kenneth's dad whimpered through his milk mustache. Of course, dear, of course. What did you find in the rocks? His mom said as she tasted the soup. So there I am, climbing up the big rocks and boulders, and the while I'm thinking, there must be a wolf, a lion, or a bear hiding in there. Remember I said I heard those weird whooshing sounds coming from the hill last week? Kenny folded the napkins and placed them around the banged-up wooden table. I remember that, he said. I thought, hold on, son, hold on. His dad interrupted, waving his hands. So I make some noises of my own to see if I can spook it off. And that's when I saw it. Kenny stopped setting the table and looked up. Saw what? The gears in the lad's brain began to turn. He realized his father's tale involved some sort of encounter with a carnivorous animal. Kenny figured he could determine just what his dad had seen based on the description. A lion was out of the question. They were too far east for lions. Wolves usually traveled in packs and were rarely seen in these parts. But bears... Bears did prefer rocky outcroppings or caves. Well... First I smell something burning, not wood, but something smoky-like. Then I see a pair of glowing eyes and a head as big as this table peers out from the opening in the side of the hill, and it's covered in horns and scales and fur like a crocagator. You mean alligator, Kenny corrected him, though he wondered what sort of alligator had horns and fur. Exactly, but have you ever seen a blue alligator? with a neck like a turkey and a body like one of them giant lizardy things in your books. You mean dinosaurs, Dad? Those really did exist, you know. Scientists have even found their bones in old... No, no, son. This wasn't one of them brontosaurus rexes. His father looked him in the eyes. It was like one of them flying things that eats pretty maidens and burns castles to the ground. Kenny paused for a moment. It can't be, he said to himself. It couldn't be. He put the last of the silverware in its place on the table. His father just sat there staring at him with his big eyes. Glancing over at his mother, Kenny noticed she had stopped cooking and was looking at them quietly while holding the ladle. He turned back to his father. Dad, 
Are, are you talking about a dragon? Yes, son. I am talking about one of them dragons. He started pacing around the kitchen, waving his arms wildly. It's taken up residence on the side of Shepherd's Hill, and we gotta sell the farm and move before that devil, that scourge, comes down and burns everything right to the ground. That's quite a chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll come back and read chapter two really soon. Thanks, be well, and take care. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to Gotham Reads for more of your favorite children's books read aloud daily.